Let's now have a look at the work kinetic energy theorem. We're not going to prove it here, but we are going to go over an example so that we understand how to apply it. So the work kinetic energy theorem is a very useful theorem, and the reason for that is because it applies all the time. It makes no assumption about the system. You don't have to meet any requirements. It is always true. So when in doubt, apply the work kinetic energy theorem against conservation of mechanical energy, which that has restrictions and might not always be applicable. So what does it say? It says that the change in kinetic energy of an object or a system over a given displacement is equal to the net work done on the object or the system over that displacement. And that's typically written delta k equals work net. So again, that's a nice condensed form. And the reason I write it like this and off to the side a bit is that I want to expand on this real quick. And I'm going to expand under the condition that we state that the only kinetic energy that we have is translational kinetic energy or linear kinetic energy, which is one half mv squared. Now we haven't learned about any other kind of kinetic energy yet. So that's why I'm stating this right now. Technically, we could just go ahead and write delta k as one half m v final squared minus one half m v initial squared, because we all we don't really know any better. The only kinetic energy we know is one half m v squared, but that won't be true when we introduce rotational kinetic energy, and we'll have to be careful whether we have one or the other, or perhaps both. So delta k equals work net is nice. In practice for now, we will write it 1 half mv final squared minus 1 half mv initial squared is equal to the net work, which, as you know, is the work of F1 plus the work of F2, etc. All the forces acting on your system or your object over the displacement. So we, we know how to compute the net work. Delta k is straightforward. Delta k is, in fact, just a difference. It's usually pretty easy to get delta k. And we then equate both, and we get to solve for one unknown because we have one equation. So just like all these nice formulas in physics, this doesn't tell you much if you don't see it applied in context. So let's go over an example. We're going to take the example of a block that we're going to slide from x initial equals 0 all the way to x final equals capital D, some distance d. And we're going to do that with a force F that's going to pull to the right. And we're going to include, actually, friction here to make things a little bit more entertaining. So we're going to have a mass m. There's going to be a coefficient of kinetic friction mu k. I'll move that over here to the side just to get it out of the way. And we are going to take our mass, and we are going to move it from left to right. It is going to start with an initial speed of 0, so it starts at rest. Eventually, it reaches a speed v final at the end. And at some point in between, we'll draw the forces acting on it. So there's the weight force. There's the normal force. The force pulling it, we'll call it capital F. We'll assume that capital F sorry, is well behaved. It is constant in magnitude and direction. Always points to the right, constant magnitude. And then there's kinetic friction always points opposite the direction of motion. And kinetic friction is constant as long as the normal force is constant. So if you move on a flat horizontal surface, then Fk will always be going to the left if you're moving to the right. And the normal force will be constant, and therefore Fk will be constant, which makes things pretty nice to figure out. So speaking of that, this is for later convenience. I am going to need the magnitude of the normal force to compute Fk. And I need to show my work. I can't just say n equals mg and hope for the best, because sometimes that's not true. So this is always going to be a component that you need to insert into your solving, because you will need the normal force if you have the kinetic friction force. And you have to just do it. You can do it up front. You can do it later when you need it. But there's no way around it. You have to figure out what the normal force is. So I'll start with that. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to write that f net y 
is equal to, well, technically it should be MAY, but that's really zero because the motion is along X, or in other words, there is no motion in the Y direction, therefore no acceleration in the Y direction. And if F net Y is zero, then I get N minus MG is equal to zero, which implies that capital N is MG, which again is just luck. There's no reason why we should believe that N is always equal to MG. In this particular case, though, it is. So, okay, fair enough. That was that. That has nothing to do with work kinetic energy theorem. Let's now apply the work kinetic energy theorem. It says that delta K equals work net. Let's start with delta K. Delta K is straightforward. Delta K is the change in kinetic energy. Well, by definition, that's one-half mv final squared minus one-half mv initial squared. And this thing starts at rest. So it's zero. So we get one-half mv final squared. And let's, um, let's actually, we should have said this from the get-go, let's agree that we're solving for v final. We do not know what v final is, and we would like to figure it out based on um, all the other forces being known and the displacement d being known. Okay, so that's delta k. Delta k is easy. There's never an issue with delta k. It's really work net that usually is um, the hard part. So what is work net? Well, work net is the work done by all the forces. And there are four forces, so there are four terms in the network. So there's work done by the normal, work done by mg, work done by capital F, and work done by kinetic friction Fk. And I'm going to go through one at a time and compute each one. Some may be positive, some may be negative. We'll find out, and we'll add them all together. All right, start with the easy ones. Work done by the normal force is zero. Work done by mg is zero. Both forces are perpendicular to the displacement of the mass from left to right. Therefore, they contribute zero work. So they're out of there. Work done by capital F. Well, the work done by capital F, I can get by computing the integral of F dx. So fair enough. My dx is going to be, and if you were to draw it, just for clarity, I'll draw it here. This is dx. The work done by this force is going to be the integral from x equals 0 to x equals d of F dot dx. Now F is in the same direction as dx. In other words, the angle between the two is zero. So I have f cosine zero dx to be integrated between zero and d. f is constant in magnitude. Therefore, I get f multiplied by x to be evaluated between zero and d. That really ends up just being f times d. And of course, because the force is constant in magnitude and direction, I could have just used the dot product f dot delta x and gotten the same answer. Fair enough. Work done by fk. Same comment. fk is constant in magnitude and direction. I could use fk dot delta x. Let's just be thorough and use the definition. So we'll use the integral. It's the integral from 0 to d of fk dot dx. Now, by definition, fk points opposite the displacement every time. Therefore, the angle between the two, fk and dx, is pi radians, or 180 degrees, whatever you want. So the magnitude of fk is mu kn. Cosine of the angle between those two vectors, that's cosine pi dx. Cosine pi is minus 1. n is mg, so I get coming out of the integral, minus mu k mg, because all those things are constant, integrate x between 0 and d, and I get minus mu k mg d. So let me reorganize this real quick. Here we get minus mu k mg d. All right. 
put everything together. Delta K equals work net. Delta K equals work net yields one half of MV final squared is equal to FD minus mu K MG D. And again, we get one equation, so we can solve for one unknown. Here we said we wanted to solve for V final. So V final is going to be, now we're going to multiply by 2. I'm going to factor out D. Divide by M, and then square root everything. And we want the speed anyway, so we're just going to keep the positive root. So this is V final. Now, could have solved all of this with F net equals MA in kinematics. Um, and you should try it and get the same answer. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. And it's not obvious on this example that work kinetic energy is faster, but once you get a hang of it, it's a lot easier to deal with work, um, um, the work kinetic energy theorem, excuse me, because, again, work and energy have no direction. They're just numbers. They're just easy quantities to compute, especially once you've done it a few times. There's not that many forces. Often the same forces come back again and again, and so you get comfortable finding work net. Just remember that you have to first compute delta K and then work net before you equate the two. At that point, you get to solve for one unknown. Thanks for watching this video. If you haven't heard of Cogris Academy before, we're a tutoring company that specializes in creating course companions that help you save time and improve your grades. You tell us which class you're taking, and we'll have a look at your syllabus, old exams, the style of your instructor, and put together a course companion, mapping over lecture notes, videos, practice problems with step-by-step -step solutions, even personalized study guides and access to a private chat for you to ask all your questions. If this sounds like something that might be helpful to you, feel free to check us out at congressacademy.com.